Well, welcome YouTubers. Today we're going to be talking about the track mat key, this guy right here. And uh, if you haven't used a track mat key, I've seen a whole bunch of tutorials online that um, pretty much show you the basics of the track mat key. But I'm going to take it a step further to show you how you can animate masks to feather masks, put text in there and feather and all that good stuff. And it's actually very, very, very easy. I've been doing it for quite some time. And I would like to share with you my little tricks that I use that keeps me from going outside of Premiere to go to a secondary program like After Effects. So all you have is Premiere. You can do a lot of this stuff in Premiere without having to go to After Effects or having to buy a secondary program like DaVinci Resolve, plugins, and all that good stuff. So let's get started, and I'll show you the wonders of the track mat key. Okay, so for our first example, boys and girls, we're going to use this particular scene this is some fountains with a sky and uh, we're gonna make it look a little more beautiful we're gonna have the sky looking nice and orange and we're gonna have the sky's color reflecting onto the water and this is where the track mat key comes in very handy because you would not be able to do this effect without using the track mat key and the reason why is because there's just not too much separation in the highlights which you want to have going around this water to make it look like it's going into the water reflecting out and looking nice and beautiful so let's go ahead and check out this clip real quick haha <laughs> okay a little too far there so let's give you a quick example why this will not work by just using one layer and using a three-way color correction and you'll see very quickly how why that does not work. So grab these, Ooh, not the track mat. Let's go ahead and paste them in here. And right there you can see how it's just, it's gonna fit, how it's just not gonna work. There's a, it looks like the sky are having an Armageddon effect going on here. And that is because we're adjusting the highlights there, the highlights and the midtones and the shadows, there's not enough separation to do this. So we're going to keep that one down as our base layer, and that's going to be just for the water. So we're going to make a track mat key real quick. And I'm going to show you what I use for my track mat key to do my keying. So I'm going to do a new color mat, and, and we're going to let it match our sequence settings. And it does not matter what color you use in here, because we are just going to bar the alpha. It can be black, blah, 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 blah. So we'll click OK, and we're naming this mat. Mat 2. I already have one in there called Mask, one in that Mat 2. So let's go ahead and pop that on there. And I'm going to put this in layer 3. It does not matter where you put it as long as it is above the actual video that you want to keep. And I like to name it Mask. So I'm using Premiere Pro CC, which is their newest one. It does have some bugs. I will warn you guys. But to pull this up, you're going to have to click on the mask to rename it. Okay, and speaking of rename, uh, rename this. I forgot an E. Boom. E. I know we don't rename that now. Someone on YouTube is going to holler at me and make fun of me. So I, I fixed it. How about this is rename this to uh, F off. There we go. I like that better. Let's get rid of that. Make sure it says F off. All right. So let's show you how the actual animated mass work. And it's very easy. I'm going to give you guys the gist, and then I'm going to copy what I have over here and paste it into this layer. So that way, I don't tie you guys up for that much time. So let's go ahead and go over here. Video effects. We're going to go to uh, da -da -da -da, King. And I'm just going to do a 8-point garbage mat. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to fit. No, we're already in fit. Let's go to 50. That's not small enough. There you go. 25. And right here, this is where we're going to make our mask. So let's go ahead and move these to the side. Get more points up top. And you can see there's eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 16. There'll be twice as much. And that's pretty much the extent you have as far as mask that you can animate in Premiere. Uh, they do not have any spline mask that you can create your own splines like in After Effects yet. I really hope one day that they include that into the newest versions of Premiere coming up. Hear me, Adobe? I'm asking you for this. It'd be pretty awesome. So, oops. 
pretty easy to click off of that by accident. Let's go ahead and go to frame one of our clip and give a keyframe for all these guys. Probably don't need a keyframe the bottom ones, but I'm not sure which ones are what now that I moved them around. Because the top left, not top left, top center, now not top center. You get the idea. So let's go ahead and go over our outline of the foreground. We'll go there, and we'll go all the way to this frame, and we'll pull it down some more. And that is pretty much how you animate your mask in Premiere. But if somebody's saying like, well, it's not feathered, there is no feather option here. I'm going to put it to you just like that, but it's very simple to feather it because we are using this as making our alpha that's going to generate the alpha channel for our mask in whatever layer we choose for the trap mat key to be on. So all you got to do is go to blur, fast blur, and crank it up. And then you have a nice feathered edge. Now, you see right here, our slider only goes to 127. But we can go above and beyond 127, like 300. And let's go ahead and repeat edges so we're not getting that stuff on the edges. If you don't repeat edges, you'll see this is going to feather into our mask. So let's go ahead and click that on. And there you go. We have an animated mask in Premiere. That's nice and feathered and will work beautifully. So now that you have the idea how to make this work, I'm just going to delete this one. And I'm going to copy the one that I spent a little more time on before into this layer. And let's go ahead and pop it up. And there we have it. OK, so let's turn this purple abyss into an actual key. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to our effects, go to keying, and we're going to select the trap mat key right here. And we're going to choose, oops, I have it on the wrong layer. How careless of me. mask and now you have it we are now keying out some of the sky and it's nice and feathered and this is actually transparent there so I've already put anything in there like another layer so let's go ahead and take this and just copy it up use alt copy it up get rid of what's there track mat key to sharp and blah 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 and let's grab my color grading I did in the sky and that looks to be it right there Let's put it right here. Let's swap these out though. Oops. The wrong layers here. And there you have it. This is going to be our foreground layer. And this is going to be our background layer. And they're nice and keyed out. And that is the track mat key when using it in color grading. A very, very useful tool to have whenever you want more control over your image. So let's get on to our next example. Okay, so let's get on to our next example. We're gonna make a custom vignette using the trap mat key. And here's our base clip. Those damn mice is piss you off sometimes. And there's our custom vignette. So, we're going to drag a mask in here first. Like so. And let's go to our effects. I'm gonna drag this up here. Kind of have to work backwards in these uh, masks for some reason. Maybe I just think backwards. I don't know. So let's go to our king, and we're just gonna use a four-point garbage mask, and sorry, garbage mat, and we are going to move this around. And if you want to animate it, you can still animate it. And here's a kind of a custom vignette. Now, if you want more control over it, of course, just grab either an eight or 16 points to have more control over it. Let's make it look kind of weird, like a diamond. I like that. All right, there we go. And let's go here. And let's grab a trap mat key, and we're going to choose our mask. And there we go. So I'll have this on the top layer and the bottom layer. Let's go ahead and copy this down, Alt key. And this one, let's get rid of the uh, track mat. And this one we're going to, uh, let's just do a RGB curves as an example. Darken up our background. Something nifty like that. 
Let's see here. Make it a little angry red. Yeah, there we go. Put a little blue in the shadows. Eh, a little more blue. And, uh, eh, whatever. That's fine. Let's go to our mask. And we're going to now feather it by doing a fast blur. We don't need to repeat edges in this because there's no edges to repeat. And we're going to blur it up. If that's not enough, go above and beyond 300. And we have a custom vignette that is easy to change. So if you don't like that, you can just do this. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, uh. And we can adjust the way it looks. To your heart content. And like I said before, you want more than four. Just pick a garbage mat that has more than four. And that's pretty much your vignette example. Very useful. And now for our last example, we are going to move on to text. So here's our base clip. And what we're going to do is this. Text. Yeah, kind of cool, right? And I'm sure you probably know already how this works. We're just going to use a text layer that we can edit. And this works really well because we are just stealing alphas for our track mat key. Anything that has an alpha, you can use that for. So we're going to put our text in there. And I have a time lapse right here. Let's go ahead and copy this. It's right here. Get rid of everything. There we go. Let's drag this in here. So we want to key that out. So we're going to use trap mat key. Select our layer, the key, and then we have our text keyed out. And of course, if you want to add a drop shadow in there, drop shadows are only produced from an alpha. So if you put that in the bottom of the stack, let's see, let's go to video effects, perspective. There it is. Drop shadow. And then we have a drop shadow that we can put wherever we like. A little darker. Soften it. And voila, there we have it. And what's really nice about all this, if you use your real-time effects, which I am doing, you can use the Mercury Playback Engine to give you some really good performance. And then we can take our text, let's say, and we can animate it. So let's start from here. Position scale and rotation. Start from here. Move it in like so, and it will animate with the mask and all that good stuff. And say you want to blur it, of course, pop a fast blur on there. Go to frame one, blur. Let's make this stupid big, like 200. Ooh, too big, 200. And then it'll come in right here to like zero. So you have a, a nifty, oh, what is that? It's scary to text. And there you have it. Well, that's pretty much the, uh, the mask in Premiere. It's a very powerful tool once you know how it works. And I hope this helps you. And like always, don't forget to subscribe. And like I always say, a peace out.